diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. Now before we go into diagnosis per se, first we'll be talking about the most important thing which has already been asked in super specialty exam that is the diagnostic criteria. There is a proper diagnostic criteria given. First I'll define the criteria then we will move into the details and individual aspects of the criteria will I'll be dissecting out. So to make the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, two factors, two things have to be fulfilled and both of them have to be fulfilled. It is not that one out of them should be present. So what are the two things? First, there should be a clinical picture compatible with cystic fibrosis. So there should be a clinical picture which is compatible with cystic fibrosis as well as there should be a laboratory evidence of dysfunction in the CFTR. So there should be lab evidence of CFTR dysfunction. So what are the diagnostic criteria which are included in the clinical picture which is compatible? So there can be either any clinical features, any clinical features suggestive of cystic fibrosis. They can be either respiratory or there can be GIT features or there can be genitourinary features or the patient is uh, there is history of cystic fibrosis diagnosed according to this criteria in one of the sibling. So in a sibling there is a diagnosed case of cystic fibrosis or thirdly if there is a positive newborn screening test. As we shall see the newborn screening test for cystic fibrosis is very different from the a screening test of sweat chloride which is done in older children and adults. So any one out of these three, either clinical feature, the patient himself or herself is having of cystic fibrosis or there is a history of proven cystic fibrosis in one of the siblings or there is a positive newborn screening test for cystic fibrosis. Any one out of these factors if it is present, that is one essential criteria fulfilled. Plus. On the other hand, there should be something out of lab evidence of CFTR dysfunction. So here also we have three criteria. Either there should be two abnormal positive sweat chloride tests, two positive sweat chloride tests done on two different days. We know that for older children and adults, the screening test of choice is a sweat chloride test where you check for the amount of chloride in sweat and uh, after doing pyelocarpine iontophoresis and if the amount of chloride in that sweat sample is more than 60 milliculates per liter, that is suggestive of CFTR dysfunction. So if there are two tests performed on two separate days, they are found to be positive. That is considered to be a criteria fulfilling lab evidence of CFTR dysfunction. Or in case you find that there are two CFTR gene mutations, a single mutation may or may not be associated with cystic fibrosis. A wide variety of CFTR mutations have been described. Many of them are actually phenotypically silent also. So if there are two CFTR gene mutations, these gene mutations should have been shown to be associated with cystic fibrosis as per the database. Or you are able to show a abnormal nasal potential difference measurement. Even a single value of abnormal nasal potential difference measurement will be suggestive of CFTR dysfunction. So any one out of these three plus any one out of these three, if both the criteria, one criteria out of clinical picture compatible and one criteria out of CFTR dysfunction is present, you make the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. This is how you make the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. This is very important and has already been asked in MCQs in the super speciality exam.